What's going on YouTube now? Uh, for a while now I've been collecting uh, 360 games. Um, I've accumulated uh, quite a handful here. Uh, this binder here is uh, 336. That one's full. This one here is almost full. It's got a couple sheets in the back. So, um, I want to say there's probably like 600 and, maybe like 650, 60 games. So, um, I've decided, you know, after all this time of ordering them with um, various people on the internet, I've decided to just figure out on how to do it on my own. Um, you know, granted it wasn't that expensive, it was like 4 or $5 each, but, um, you know, still it was something I was curious about, so... Um, anyway, I went out, I um, did my research, I had to pick up this uh, burner here, it's a light on, IHAS uh, 124B. Um, I also picked up this enclosure because this was uh, meant for an internal computer. So I picked up the enclosure, there's the enclosure, and um, it's basically a, a SATA to USB connection. So I'll show you the websites here where I obtained everything. So, modchipcentral.com. You go here to 360. Go to modchips. And then just scroll down until you see the uh, CD ROM. There it goes right there. Light on. It's in stock, so. You can order it, uh, it was $34.95 and it comes with stock firmware so you're going to have to uh, do some things to uh, make it work right. And then the other device I got was this here, the um, enclosure, which basically uh, changes it from um, SATA to USB. And that I obtained from Newegg.com for $27.99. It's a uh, Sabrient, or however you say it, uh, five and a quarter uh, USB enclosure, CD-ROM, DVD enclosure. And, um, alright, so this is what I had to uh, do. I went on to this website, and you can just Google this. Um, that's the website, XNAND, and how to flash a light on IHAS 124. And it tells you everything you need to do. Now, um, to like I said before, this comes with stock firmware, so you can't um, burn 360 games properly. So what I had to do was um, I had to flash the unit with this. So I left the. Um, the power cable plugged into here so I can supply it electricity so I can access it and then um, the uh, SATA to USB that was supplied with this um, for some reason it I wasn't able to um, to flash it with the custom firmware so what I did was I left the electricity cable from this and then I used this which is what I used to um, flash my Xbox 360 um, the, uh, the CD tray um, so I can play these backups, and um, this is technically the same thing as in here, but this got the job done, so this side is SATA, other side here is USB, so I plug this end to the back of the CD-ROM, I plug this end to the computer, and I was able to uh, flash it with the custom firmware, so I got the job done, and here on this website basically tells you what you have to do so plug it in it's gonna tell you CD-ROM is found and these are the uh, two software uh, items that I had to use um, to get the CD-ROM going the first thing I had to do was uh, this here EEPROM utility this allowed me to back up the uh, EEPROM information that came with the um, CD-ROM unit just in case I screwed things up I can later go ahead and restore and um, the other item was flash utility for light on 
uh, drives. So basically, um, I just uh, read the flash that was in there. I loaded up the uh, custom firmware, and then I wrote it to the CD-ROM unit, and now I can burn um, Xbox games properly. So once that was done, next step was to find these games. Um, I'm not really going to go into uh, details of where you can find these games. You can look on the internet, and with a couple of minutes, within a couple of minutes, you can find them. So um, I just got the links to download. I don't bother with torrents. Um, I'll use a uh, uh, file. Uh, I forget what they're called. Like um, these uh, file servers, like uh, Mega Upload and um, Rapid Share and whatnot. In this case, I'm using uh, fileforth.com, and I'll get the links. And then I use this, this other program here called uh, J Downloader which uh, helps me download the links so um, I subscribed to this, this was like nine dollars for uh, the month um, and uh, it'll allow me to download these huge files because 360 games are about uh, seven to eight gigs uh, if not more actually they're about uh, eight something once they're downloaded and uh, extracted so once you have it downloaded you've got to extract the uh, RAR file I use uh, WinRAR in this case uh, it does it automatically once it's done it, go, it goes ahead and downloads and uh, extracts for you uh, once that's done the other program I use is this right here it's uh, ABGX360 so I plug in the uh, ISO in here and I'll click uh, launch down here it'll run it through this uh, DOS program and basically it'll detect uh, what is needed to make the game run if files are um, if there's something that's incorrect it'll attempt to fix it um, if you see green that's good green means it's fixing things if you see uh, blue that means it's found a problem and it basically uh, goes out and finds the uh, resolution for it um, the solution for it rather and it fixes it so there you go it's downloaded successfully it's applied successfully uh, stealth files patched successfully and once it's done you can just hit any key to close it and then if you hit launch again let me move it over here everything will be green again so I'll run it through one time um, let it detect any uh, issues it might have um, if I see blue, then it'll. I know there are problems, and it'll fix it. And then uh, once it's done, I'll run it through again, just to verify that everything is in green and working correctly. Uh, so we can close this, since I know it's going to pass. All right. So once I have the ISO and it's patched, it's stuff patched, so I can play online, and it's also got the uh, right uh, data topology and uh, anything else it might need to uh, make the ISO uh, work correctly. Um, the ISO is ready to burn, so I'll go from here, close this, I'll load it up into Image Burn, I'll select my iHAS burner, and let it burn. Now, these are the uh, CDs okay so in this case it burned it's done here's oh here's the backup these are the CDs that I use it's a DVD plus R dual layers 8.5 gigs 2.4 speed now that's very important right there I'm not sure if you're gonna see that but that's the speed I burn at to speed. So it typically takes about 40-45 minutes to uh, burn one of these. You can burn it faster, they have the 8-speed uh, CDs, but um, the slower you burn it, the uh, better the uh, backup is going to be. You won't get any errors. Um, so I'll burn at to speed, I'm not in a rush. Um, I'll let it burn for 40 minutes, 45 minutes. And once it's done, we'll come over here to my 360 which is flashed with a uh, LT 3.0 and I'll test it out
And there you go. So, it's loaded correctly. Let's see if we can get to the uh, title menu. There you go. So that's all you need to know to um, make uh, proper backups for the uh, 360. Um, the hardware you need, the software you need, whatever information you might need. It's it's fairly simple. Um, you know, it took me a bit to put everything together, but um, hopefully this video will uh, explain more in detail and. Um, what you might need and how to get everything done correctly. Um, this is basically what I get. I get the Spin Duo 50 from uh, Amazon, and they're I think it's like forty-seven, forty-eight dollars, um, free shipping. So that's not bad. And um, that's it. The other thing I'm gonna invest in is um, the uh, labels and uh, a nice uh, photo printer, so I can get some nice labels on there instead of using a marker. I can do what they've been doing here, which looks pretty cool. The ones that I've been doing, I just print out the um, the covers, which doesn't look that bad. It looks pretty decent, but yeah, I'd still rather have them look like that.